All right, so today we're working on a 2016 F350, and I had a canopy installed, and uh, I'm not a big fan of the way they wired some of the did some of the wiring. So uh, I'm going to be addressing that today. Uh, here's an example. So the canopy glass has a an electronic actuator to unlock and lock it, and this is where they tie it in here. Not a big fan of these Scotch locks, vampire clan. Vampire crimps, whatever these things are called. Um, I think that they don't hold up over time. They can damage the conductor that's inside the wire and uh, lead to problems down the road. Um, so actually, a while back, I had wired in a circuit where I tied in for the tailgate, the tailgate actuator. And this is where I tied in here, which goes to the second door here on this side. Um, it's that circuit. And I did a solder connection. So since this is already at the tailgate, I think I'm just gonna eliminate this wiring here, pull it out. Um, I'm not sure exactly how far up they, or where they routed it through the, to the outside, but I'm gonna be basically pulling that out. If they drill the hole, I'll seal it up. Um, but, so that's one of the, the items I wanted to address. The other is when they tied in for the tail light or brake light on the canopy, they did the same thing. Let me see if I can find that back up in here. It's right there, right there. So same thing. Um, this is outside, so definitely not gonna hold up. So I wanna get rid of that. And um, yeah, so that's that's the plan for today. See, I've already removed this panel here to show you what we're gonna be working on. Um, the wire that they ran is here and it goes forward. So I've gone ahead and I've popped out the pin that was here in this hole and uh, I'm going to be pulling this guy off uh, and see where they went through to the outside if it just goes straight down or if it goes through the firewall somewhere um, and then I'll, uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right so I followed that wire and it goes up underneath the carpet and it comes up here to I guess that's the transmission uh, cable transmission shifter cable there. Um, and that's where it's gonna go, where it goes to that grommet to the outside. So I guess now we'll go ahead and uh, disconnect it from up here, repair the wire, probably put some heat shrink on it, solder, um, and then start pulling that wire out. All right, so this is what these look like, in case you're not familiar. It's just a, a piece of metal that the wire slips into and uh, it kind of splits the insulation. And so that's how it works. Uh, to open these guys, they've got a little clip here on this side and that unlocks the top here. And then once you take that off, you can split it like that and basically open it up so that it looks like this. Then I'm gonna pop the wire off, maybe. All right, so then there's the new wire that they ran. And there's the existing wire and you can see how it splits the insulation and it can cut those copper strands and affect the affect the integrity of that wire so i'm going to wrap it um i'm not sure what i'm going to do with that yet i was thinking of doing heat shrink and soldering it back together but we will see i'll let you know what to do all right, so that's where the wire comes through the floor there next to that transmission shifter cable. It comes over here to the transmission. And let me see if I can, or I'm just gonna get it up top. So let's see if I can just pull it out. Oh yeah. I'll have to seal up that hole that they put there. It's always fun when stuff like that happens. Um, and one of the other things I'm gonna be working on, so you see this blue wire here, that they ran to the battery. And I don't really care for the way that they routed these either. I don't care that this is in like a, a non-protective loom, like either a corrugated loom or having an additional layer of insulation around it. It's just a single conductor wire. So I'm gonna be swapping that out also. That'll probably be done a little bit later. Right now I'm just focusing on getting this guy out for the canopy glass actuator. So one other thing I just noticed, I got a little bit of an oil leak right there. So I just got this back from the Ford dealer 
yesterday. They were doing some warranty repairs on it. And uh, yeah, forgot to, I guess I forgot to show them that, tell them that was leaking or something. I don't know. Um, they did do a courtesy inspection, told me that my battery is almost bad and checked my lights and stuff like that. But they did not, I guess, see that oil leak or maybe it doesn't fit within their levels for, um, you know, covered by warranty. And it's not a big enough leak. I don't know. I'll have to check in with them and uh, see if I can remember to update you guys when I get to that point. So here's where they routed those two wires above the axle. So there's the axle here. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. That's the fifth wheel bracket there. And yeah, it's just kind of laying on top of it. Uh, definitely not ideal, not the way that I want it done. So another reason why you know, I'm cleaning things up. So I'm kind of right above the spare tire. You can see there it is just, like I said again, just hanging out. <laughs> not really protected from any sharp edges or rubbing or anything like that. It's loose, not tied up like at all. So pulling this out has been pretty easy and it'll be nice once it's routed along the frame rail, protected and using, using some sort of cable management, probably just zip ties to uh, keep it in place and keep it from getting shorted out or damaged. Uh, we do get snow here, and so when it's really bad, or if we're traveling to areas that have a lot of snow, snow and ice can accumulate on stuff like this, uh, and then it weighs down the harness until it breaks the harness or causes issues, and it's just not worth the risk. So, yep, another reason why it's getting addressed. And like I said, this is super easy, super quick to, to manage this, especially since I already have these wires at the back of the truck. All right, so I got it pulled out all the way to the back here. That's where it's gonna go up into the bed or along the side rail of the bed. And uh, so I'm gonna cut it off down here somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. This other black round wire here, this is the wire that I ran for the uh, tailgate actuator. And so I'm gonna cut that back here somewhere and solder in uh, a connection uh, solder in this wire and heat shrink it and so that way they're tied together it's kind of interesting because when the canopy was installed and they ran this wire for the canopy glass actuator they wired it to the driver's door um, and then when I ran the wire for the tailgate which was done beforehand a while beforehand um, I wired it to the passenger door because I have the I don't remember what it's called exactly, but it's the like sequential unlock or something like that where the first time you hit the unlock button, it unlocks just the driver's door, and then the second time it unlocks the rest of the doors. Um, and the reason I did that is primarily I don't need this actuator back here locking and unlocking every time I unlock the door. So I'm just thinking it'll last longer, uh, less prone to issues, all that fun stuff. And then you can see here the, the blue wire they ran here. This is the one that's going up for the brake light. And this is a tap that Ford leaves um, for accessories like this. And yeah, you can see that they just, instead of cutting it off and using a butt connector or soldering or something, they just did a vampire clamp. And I'm just not a fan of that, especially here in the elements. Um, we get some uh, de-icer put on the roads to deal with ice and snow, stuff like that. So it's like, why would you do that? And then one of my little pet peeves is, having the zip ties not cut flush, leaving it like that at an angle, of course, right? So it ends up cutting you when you stick your arm up there. Yeah, it's not, not ideal. Um, I know that, you know, most of these accessory guys, they're not, they're just trying to do it as quickly as they can, get the vehicle out the door. So I'm not, not necessarily blaming them and trying to show, throw shade on them. It's just uh, not the way I want it done. So I'm just taking my time to address and, and fix it. Um, one other thing about that wire that's up there that I ran for the tailgate, there is a connector for the tailgate. So if I ever take the tailgate off, I've got a connector for it. That's over here on this side. So I think I'm just gonna wire it, put that splice here on this end. So it's somewhat accessible um, and something that obviously can be I don't know if it would ever be removed if the canopy was removed. Yeah, I'll probably put a connector in there. So we'll do a solder connection 
and then a connector down, down maybe on the other end where it goes through. Actually, if I put a connector on there, it may not fit through where they routed it. I don't know. I'll do some, mm -hmm. some thinking because that comes out here and it's up in, in that channel. Oh, look, all the connectors. That's lovely. Um, and then it's going to go up along the side there. So, yeah, maybe we'll put a little two-wire two, two -wire connector down here somewhere, probably in this area, so that in the event I need to take the canopy off or whatever, we don't just have to cut the wire and then repair it later. It's just got a connector. We'll see. I'll let you know uh, the next steps of what I end up uh, doing. All right, so I've decided I'm just going to cut it and uh, do a solder solder joint there with heat shrink. So I've got my torch here, butane torch and solder. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that right there on the, oh, turn this around. So we'll cut that right there. Cut this one right here. Boom. I will st strip them. So I'm not gonna go terribly long on the On the wire here, maybe uh, what, three eighths of an inch, a little over a quarter inch, something like that. Do, 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 do. This is a little bit more difficult to do one handed. It'd be nice if I had a device to hold up my camera. Oh, right about there. So, yeah, I should be able to. And I'm just going to do, I need to slide some heat shrink on there. And then I'm just going to basically twist these together and then I'll solder it. So I've just got my soldering iron warming up for now and then we'll jump into that. So I went ahead and put the wires together, slid my heat shrink tube down and I'm going to go ahead and solder. So one of the first things we that I want to do is put some solder on the bottom of my tip here. Boom. It, one, it tells me if it's hot enough, which it is because I've had it sitting running for a little bit. And then I use that puddle that sits on the bottom of the tip to heat up the copper and to basically apply the solder. So I'll look at underneath, it looks okay. The strands kind of flared out a little bit on me, but that's no big deal. I'm just gonna grab like my needle nose and I'll just pinch those back down. All right, so we got that there. Now that's it, my connections are done. Like I said, I'm gonna grab some pliers and just kind of push down these, these flares a little bit. So that way I don't have anything sharp sticking into my heat shrink tubing. On the torch here, I've got a little hole there that exhausts the hot air from the burning of the butane. So I just use that guy. I usually get in on the underside. Just being careful, try not to melt the insulation, letting the tip touch it anywhere else. Moving the wire a little bit. All right, so that one is good. This guy up. Get the underside without burning my finger. Melting anything else. All right, so oh, a little bit more on this end. All right, I think that it looks good. Looks good to me. Actually, let me get a little bit more on the other side here. Yep, there is another tip that can be used on this to uh, put out just heat without having a, a hot tip. So that would, would get it, make it easier or I could have used my heat gun. But since I had this out, it's already hot, ready to go. So I've run an extension cord or whatever. So that is what it looks like here. Let me get that in focus. So there are my two solder joints with the heat shrink. And yeah, that'll, that'll protect those, those wires there. And uh, now I can put the cover back on. And, oops, sorry. And yeah, we'll go from there. Next thing I need to do is close this all up. All right, so originally I said I was gonna cut this, put a connector down underneath the bed. But I think I'd rather put the connector up here so that in the event the canopy needs to come off, this is where you're going to go to disconnect the wire. You're not going to go underneath the bed 
Yeah, that's not going to be helpful. So, yep, I'm going to pull a little, little slack here, pull this up, put a connector right in here somewhere. I don't know. Uh, it'd be nice to have the connector to kind of tuck in underneath this rail, but uh, I'll play with it, see what's going to look best. This is a fuse box that came with the canopy so that they put in here. It's got some fuse in it. Sorry, I can't see this thing. So if I open it, boom, fuses, a couple of USB ports. Um, I believe one of the fuses is for the bed, or I'm sorry, is for the brake light on the back of the canopy. But the other two, I don't know if they just run these USB ports or, or what. I'll pull this box off and take a look, see what, uh, what this thing's all about. All right, so after pulling this little fuse panel down, uh, there's a connector on the back of this guy. So that kind of defeats the need for adding another connector. Um, so yeah, it's that upper one there that the blue and green wire go into, the black connector. And then the white connector is what actually goes through the canopy into the actuator, heading to the actuator in the glass. So that's pretty cool. The only thing left to do is to solder into the existing wire for the tailgate latch actuator. All right, so these are my two wires here. I've already stripped them and prepped them for solder. Um, the one in the, oops, sorry. The one in the back is the one going to the tailgate and the one in the front is the one coming from the cab. So I'm going to solder these together and then after I get that done, then I'm going to bring this guy in and solder it to there like that, maybe something like that. Um, yeah, I just figure I'll tin these two wires over here and then after those are soldered, then this will attach easy enough. Uh, but that way I don't have to strip back you know, like an inch of copper in order to uh, try to get all the wires twisted together. And I think that's gonna work out. All right, let's see if I can do this and hold the camera at the same time. So we're gonna get some solder on the bottom of our tip here. And we're gonna get it, boom, that one's done. Try not to melt the tire. That looks pretty dang good. Looks good to me. Uh, we've got a little bit hanging off the end here. Maybe I'll see if I can pop that off. Yep, that works. All right, soldered. So now I just need to bring up the other wire and bring that in. I'm going to do that off camera because I definitely cannot do that with only two hands and hold the camera. All right, so there it is soldered up and I got the heat shrink on there. Uh, now I just need to put the heat shrink over this area. So I think that's going to be good. And there it is. So now I can route it back where it needs to go. Plug it in. All right. So I got it plugged in underneath. And uh, now we're going to test it. So I'll unlock it. Doesn't rotate. Unlock it just does the driver's door. And a second time, does this guy. So lock. Unlock. Unlock again. Boom. Done. Good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna start replacing this blue wire. This is the brake signal going to the canopy. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off on this end, and then I'm gonna run a new wire, which I have here. It's gonna be this wire here that's already got some loom on it. Um, so I'm gonna cut the blue wire, and then I'm gonna tape it to this wire and pull it up from the bottom up, and then, uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is a white wire, but for the short run, eh, I'm not as, not as concerned, and it's already protected, so I don't have to try to put a split loom over top of a, an individual wire. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show you where we're, where we're at from there. All right, so I pulled the light out here because the 
wire that comes up for the brake light is this wire here. It's a blue wire. Um, I think the color of the day was blue because this other blue wire is power feeding the fuse panel, which is for the canopy light. Oh, I already cut it down below, but um, feeding the canopy light as well as the little fuse panel. Um, anyway, so pull the light out so that I can start. So I can pull up these wires here. Um, you can see here, so this is awesome because they're awesome like that. Um, they put a connection, a butt connector down there, which was right at the bottom of the bed. And then um, there's two different fuses they wanted to feed with battery power. So they put in this little pigtail and then spliced it with this um, vampire clamp. So here's another one. And you can see here we've had moisture and all sorts of fun stuff getting up here um, already. So it's a good thing that, you know, we're doing this to try to eliminate any failure points or eliminate these failure points. Um, so here's the new wire that I'm running up that has the protective coating on it. So this is going to be my brake light wire, which I'm going to splice into this guy, um, into this red with a white stripe, which is going to go through that fuse up above and then um, in that fuse panel that I showed you guys earlier, which is right around the corner here. Sorry, it's a little dark. Um, but yeah, so it feeds there. And then these other two fuses, I don't know if these are just for those two USBs or what they're gonna what they're gonna feed, but I will be replacing and running a new wire here. I'm gonna change this um, joint. And the wire that I'm running will go all the way straight directly to the battery. And I do have a fuse holder that I'll be using at the battery location as well. All right, so here's that uh, wire that I'm gonna be soldering right here. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus maybe. I don't know that it really matters that much. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be the new brake wire going to that brake circuit down below the bed. And then this goes up into the fuse box um, as that brake circuit. So I'm going to solder this real quick. Actually, let me see if I can do this on the camera, maybe. Let's see. Let's try something like that. I think this thing should be warm enough now. Let's focus over here. Sorry. Just gonna heat up the wire a little bit. There it goes. So now it's accepting the solder. Take that off. So I think that I think that's where we want it to be. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this out of my hand. Slide down the heat shrink, tubing, boom. Let's see if I can shrink this without melting it. Something like that. All right, so the heat shrink is installed. Now we're going to see if this, how far we can get this thing to slide up. It should slide up just over the, <laughs> it should slide up over the heat shrink, but I think I need two hands. All right, so there it is. Uh, it's about where it's going to end up sitting, which is perfect because it's covering that uh, connection. And then this part just goes up into the bed here. There is a piece of this on this end that is protecting it from the other side. So, um, and I believe that will go down a little bit more. If not, I might, I might put in more... Um, I might put in some convoluted loom. I've got some of that sitting around. So maybe I'll fill these gaps with convoluted loom when I'm all done. This is the ground wire feeding the, I guess the fuse box. And I mean, even though it doesn't do anything at the fuse box, I've got a power LED there indicating that it has 12 volts. Um, but I believe this is also the ground for the brake light um, as well. And so when I run a new wire for power, which are going to go to these two wires, I'm also going to run a ground wire with it. So that's going to be this cable here. Um, it's 16 gauge with a red and black uh, conductor in there.
So this is what I'm going to run from the battery to the fuse box back here. Basically, it's going to be behind the tail light, the driver's side tail light. And I'm going to use the fuse up at the um, battery. This is going to be this guy, which is a pretty heavy duty fuse. I think these are 14, probably actually, I think they're 12 gauge wires. So, and then it's weather tight. So it's got a seal there and then it opens. I can do this with one hand. Here we go. And so it's got a fuse in here right now. It's just get 10 amp, which I think is going to be more than adequate. It's running an LED light in the canopy and that's it. So I think 10 amps is more than enough, um, which is also well under the rating of this cable, 16 gauge wire. So 16 gauge wire, I believe you can go up to 15, maybe 20 amps, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but so I'm just gonna have this guy in there and it should be good. So I see that blue wire up there. That's the one coming from the battery. So I am going to try to grab that. See, there it is. Blue wire. That's going to the battery. We are going to pull that out and replace it with the other wire, the dual conductor insulated wire. Red and black, 16 gauge. All right, so here's the blue wire up here in the edge compartment. I don't think that this thing is has any circuit protection up here at all. I think it's just what's in the canopy, which is not ideal. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it here. And they just use an oversized ring terminal. Cut it, split it, and put it in. Oh, look at that. Isn't that an interesting crimp there? At uh, with all these frays sticking out. Oh my goodness. That does not look very good. Not a fan of, uh, of that. What can you do? That's why we're we're gonna fix this. We'll turn the battery back up. I wonder if there's a power stud in the fuse panel that's right here. Let's take a look, see if we can get this guy off. Alright, I think we just got it. All right, so there is a power stud in there. Let's see if I can show you what I'm looking at here. So there in the fuse panel right here, there's a power stud. So I think I'm gonna use that as my battery connection for my fuse holder and run that back to my, back to the canopy. So that's there. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this blue wire altogether. That's a little hokey, a little too hokey for me. And I see there's a little battery corrosion on my, um, corrosion on the battery there. So I need to get that taken care of. I'll probably sand the bottom of this bracket because it seems to be rusting on the bottom. So sand it down and then put some new paint on it. Quick and easy, no problem there. All right, so I took off those uh, nuts already into this bracket. So I'll just get this neutralized with some baking soda, rinse it off. And, uh, and then start painting the bracket. All right, so I got a brush here. Just gonna knock off some of this thicker stuff, thicker material here. There it is. So I need to wipe it down and then primer it and then paint it black. Okay. 
All right, so let me go ahead and attach this fuse holder to this wire. So something like that. And then I just need to solder it. And that should be, should be good from there. And then I'll put ring terminal on this end here to that battery post, or I'm sorry, the power post in the fuse box under the hood. And then this guy, I'm gonna run the ground. I'm gonna run to a ground that's underneath the hood. So I'm gonna use that same ground bolt where another ground uh, terminal is, is bolted. This side this is going to go to that stud in the fuse box. So we're going to put a ring terminal on there. And then this one is going to a bolt on the under the hood. I think it's like on the um, firewall area. So we're just going to do a crimp connection here. And now the other wire, or the other end. So, right there. All right, now we can give it a pull test. And those are solid bit of loom on this wire. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tape, wrap it around the red wire. And now that that's there, then I'm going to slide this loom over it. Some tiny loom, so it's real fun to work with. Okay, now that I've got that started, slide it down all the way. We're gonna run tape around the outside of the loom. We don't wanna get the black wire because we're gonna loom that separately. Doesn't take much, but now that'll hold the loom in place. And I'm gonna put a larger piece of loom once I've got the black wire loomed. So let's go to the end of the fuse. We're gonna go there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the tape here on this end. And this just helps to make sure, helps to keep the loom attached to the wire so it doesn't pop off or slide down or move. All right. And again, it doesn't take a ton to hold that in place. So now that's what we've got. Now I'm going to get the other wire, the black wire. Around the loom, same thing. And you can try to start it further back if you want. That makes it easier for you because you can always push it down, even with the tape there, slide it down. And then we're gonna just go around twice. Okay. 
and then we're going to go all the way down to the end. So I am going to overlap the terminal a little bit, which is going to help keep any moisture out of the back side. And then we're going to cut this guy about there. All right, so that's right where we want it. And around like two times, should be plenty. And that's what the end is gonna look like there. It's gonna hold the loom on perfectly right where we want it. Now I'm gonna loom this one, which is gonna be the same, same process. Doesn't matter which end you start on. So I'm gonna start there, grab the loom. Once that's started, then I can tape it. Now it's taped. So I'm gonna just put the loom on the rest of this wire. And like with the other one, we're gonna go over the terminal just a hair, which in my mind makes me think it's gonna help keep some of that moisture out of the backside of the terminal. Come on. This really small stuff is, can be challenging to, to use. It's really stiff. So a lot different than even quarter inch or uh, three eighths, half inch. Those are those seem to be a lot easier to use. Um, but for the individual wires, I like using the smaller, smaller stuff. I think this loom is like three sixteenths, um, and I think they make smaller. I think they make an eighth inch, which is even smaller. But that stuff is so difficult. I find it difficult to use. So this is about the smallest that I'll go with. Um, so that way I've got some flexibility because with the small stuff, if you like bend it too tight, boom, the wire might pop out <laughs> or the loom pops off. And so then you're fighting that. So this is what it looks like right now. I've got the ground wire there and its loom and then the power wire here with the fuse holder. And then I'm gonna throw a larger, I could just tape it here, but I think I'm just gonna grab a larger piece of loom, maybe like a half inch and see if I can get both of these in there and then tape it over this joint. So we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Or maybe, maybe I'll just take this loom and put it over that and then tape it all together. I think I like that idea better. So again, I like taping what I'm working with to the outside. So when I tape, when I put this on, it is not gonna close all the way but I think that will be okay because I'm gonna have tape around it. And, oops. We'll see what that looks like. Maybe it won't close enough. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Perfect, it popped off again. I'm just gonna see if I can. Cut it about there because I don't need a whole lot on this piece. The idea is just to give it something to, to tape to. So something like this. Could have just taped directly to the wires how it was without putting the loom over the black wire. Um, but in my mind, it just, 
I don't know. To me, it looks cleaner that way, having the loom underneath the tape. I don't know what the what the difference is, but in my mind, in my brain, <laughs> my lizard brain, that looks good. <laughs> so there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of black on this. Just gonna do a really thin coat. Can always come back and uh, add more paint. A liner out, which make it a little easier for getting that uh, table where we want it to go. That guy out. So there's that blue wire. So we are going to run our wire down similarly and then uh, run it along the frame rail. All right, so I got my wire ran up here, just hanging out. So I'm gonna try to take this bolt off without uh, shorting against anything. Yeah, this is really tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy out. And then that's where we're putting the fuse. Maybe so this a little bit, make things a little easier on me. Oh, it's just gonna be a pain. So there's the stud. Pointed in the right direction. Torque this guy down. Right there. And then I'm going to push the terminal down. Just kind of bend it behind or bend it down so that the lid won't interfere or it won't interfere with the lid. And then the plan is to use this ground here. It's behind my finger. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get the light in under there. So there's a ground stud there, right in there, where I think he's pointing. So that's where I'm gonna put the ground. tight. And I just need to route my wire here kind of out of the way. The fuse holder is going to sit next to the fuse box. I mean the fuse box and the brake cylinder here. So we got our ground wire, we got our power wire. We can put our cover back on now. If I move my light out of the way. All right, so there's my wire that I ran, and uh, I've got it zip tied to a couple of the harnesses here, and I've already gone ahead and run it all the way to the back. So this is uh, where we've got it here, and then under the hood, we've got the fuse holder here that I was talking about, and also here's the grout that goes there and then there's my splice there now back here so I've already soldered the two wires 
two red wires with the um, one red wire coming for the battery from the fuse. And then I've soldered the black wire as well. So that's all done. I put this larger convoluted loom over it here. And then that's going to get tucked into this pocket here. So now I can go ahead and put in the tail light. So as you can see, now the light here works. It's wired to this switch up here in the corner. And it gets power through the fuse holder here, which is what I just ran power and ground to. So that's all. That's all done now. Done cleaning all that up. I just did the underside because that's where it was all rusty. So that's done, installed, uh, and tight. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think about the original installation and what you think of the changes I made. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.